it's a never ending energy. Like, whoa, I know you don't want no enemies. I know they hate you look that beautiful right next to me. All right, so Jack the Ripper, a fan favorite in the record of Ragnarok community, has been revealed to be a fraud. You see, in the new Jack the Ripper spinoff manga, Case Files, it was revealed that the real Jack the Ripper was this guy, Luke Evans. And if you want the full story, you can go watch my video of full in-depth coverage of this chapter. But to cover it briefly here, Luke Evans was a journalist who was married and his wife cheated on him. And that seemed to be the catalyst that turned him into a psychopath with a vendetta against promiscuous women. So what he actually did is he kept his wife's hand after killing her and acted as if she was still alive and well. These promiscuous women bothered him so much that his body would have a physical reaction whenever he was near them, or even just thinking about them would make his entire body itch. So he moved on believing that it was his mission to cleanse the world from these women and thus don the name Jack the Ripper. He is the man who is the infamous prostitute killer, the one who sent the whole of London into frenzy and fear. So if that's true, and if Luke Evans is really Jack the Ripper, who is the Jack the Ripper that we know? Well, you can call him Mr. Anonymous. But let's rewind. When Jack the Ripper was introduced in round four, does this mean the announcers got it wrong? They announced him as Jack the Ripper and credited him with the killings of Luke Evans. Heimdall believes that he is the prostitute killer and he is the man that sent the entire city of London into a frenzy of fear. Well, yes and no. Jack the Ripper wanted to be known with this name because he deems himself a prostitute killer because he killed his mom who was a prostitute as a child and if you want jack's full backstory it is again covered on the page but in short jack the ripper's mother only saw jack as an opportunity to marry the boy's father before jack she conceived many children but got rid of all of them and only decided to keep jack because of a promise made by jack's father that he would return he never returned and thus that so-called love for jack turned into hatred and scorn and it all culminated with jack killing his own mother this will be important later so take note of it one thing about jack is he was born with this ocular ability to see the color of emotions so when he saw his mother's hatred it was a disgusting color and he sees these colors all the time on the streets because people treated him poorly all the time and when jack killed his mother he saw the color of fear take hold of her entire body eliminating all those disgusting colors and creating one beautiful color this kickstarted his obsession with the color of one's life fading away. So what this means is Jack the Ripper is still a mass killer, obsessed with seeing the beautiful colors caused by one's death. So there's no contradiction to what took place in round four, where he is determined to see the color of Hercules when he dies. This was all confirmed by Brunhilde, where she states that Jack the Ripper is still the man who has murdered the most people with his own hands. But wait, I thought he wasn't Jack the Ripper. Well, he's not. So who was he murdering? Well, as I mentioned before, Jack the Ripper sees emotions. And because of the dealings with his mom, he has an extreme distaste for ugly emotions, such as anger, envy, hate, arrogance, disdain. And when he sees these emotions, he wants to free these people from their grief. The same words he said to his mom all those years ago, he will now say to the most malicious. And this all led him to Luke Evans, a.k.a. Jack the Ripper. You see, Jack was enjoying his tea one day and Luke Evans was a few tables over from him. Jack noticed he was filled with filthy emotions. This prompted him to track Luke down and sneak into his apartment, the apartment where Luke was planning on killing another victim. Jack confronted Luke and was amazed by the malice he exuded. It brought a smile to his face and it inspired him to create one of the works of art only he can create. Mr. Anonymous killed Jack the Ripper that day. And the case of Jack the Ripper was never solved by Scotland Yard. But Mr. Anonymous was still alive and well and just getting started. Only it was not prostitutes he was after. He was after those filled with the nastiest of emotions. And in this instance, I like to call Jack the Punisher. He essentially hunts down bad, evil people. But it's not necessarily for a righteous reason. It's because 
dissolving the body of those nasty emotions creates the most beautiful works of art. It also doesn't contradict him wanting to kill Hercules because as I've mentioned before, he is addicted to seeing these colors. Just because he usually kills bad people doesn't mean he would pass on the opportunity to see what it looks like to kill a god. But what it does mean is that Jack the Ripper is not pure evil in the sense that we were led to believe. A lot of people won't like this, but I think that the foreshadowing is there. He was always portrayed to be happy, even in the midst of struggle, a kind-hearted soul. And even when he killed his own mom, he believed he was doing her a favor by ridding her of those nasty emotions. And after killing Hercules, you can see he was visibly shaken up. When asked by his Valkyrie, how does it feel to kill a god? It seems he did not find enjoyment like he thought he might. He's actually very sad. He respected Hercules greatly. In my eyes, it looks like he regrets this. He wants to see Hercules once more. He said if he could have one wish, he'd wish to see Hercules once more. A bond through war, so to speak. Hercules became a respected friend that he had just slain. You see, there was no beauty in killing Hercules because Hercules' color never wavered. He was truly a great man and he had no regrets or anything to fear. There was no filthy emotions to be rid of. The only thing lost was the life of a great man. And knowing all this information now really makes this scene hit differently. The scene of where Jack the Ripper is leaving the arena after the fight and the crowd is casting stones upon him, screaming at him, surely showing a sea of negative emotion. All Jack can do is pick himself back up and continue moving forward. They believe he is something he is not. A murderer, yes, but in the words of Shakespeare, a monster he is not. For he is but human too. And in my opinion, this new insight makes all this that much better. Because we know the truth no one else does in that crowd, except for maybe Brunhilde. In my eyes, this enhances the Jack the Ripper we know and love. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, share with a friend, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.